that's what you should be doing. OK, so um, we uh, had this question about when is it the case that sequences have convergent subsequences? And uh, there was a conjecture that in a compact metric space, that must be true. So um, let me make a definition. This is a definition that's not in your book, OK? But I'm going to tell you this definition because it is, it, it, it's, a, it's a phrase that comes up a lot, and it's convenient for our purposes. So um, we're going to call a metric space uh, sequentially compact. Oh, maybe this was not a good time to introduce this definition, but we're going to introduce it here anyways. We'll call a metric space sequentially compact uh, if every sequence has a convergent subsequence. And the question was, really, is it true that a compact set is also sequentially compact? Right? Does compactness imply sequential compactness? Because really, what does sequentially compact mean? It means this, this, this uh, space is small enough that every sequence, even if the sequence doesn't converge, you can find something that, uh, some subsequence that converges. So here's a theorem. Uh, compactness basically implies sequential compactness. So if x is compact, then x is sequentially compact. There's the theorem. The way your book says it, in a compact metric space, every sequence has a convergent subsequence. has a subsequence. And I'll be a little more ex explicit here. Not only am I, am I saying the sequence converges, I'm saying converges to, to a point of that subsequence, right? So uh, in a compact space X, every sequence has a subsequence converging to a point of X. And the, the only reason I'm, I'm trying to be uh, explicit here is because there's sometimes this confusion. If you look at some space like Q, you, you look at this and you say, wait, this is not, this does look like it converges to something. It converges to pi, but pi is not in Q. What we're saying when we say uh, we have sequential compactness is any sequence has a subsequence that converges to a point in that space, okay? Which this clearly Q is not sequentially compact, okay? So Yes, Aaron? So you've got, you know, compact and compact doesn't matter. And compact implies sequentially compact. Yes. The terminology says that then sequentially compact does not imply compact. So what is then the question? Ooh, excellent question. So uh, it turns out this is also a fact, which I'm not going to prove, uh, that in fact they're equivalent. This actually jumps ahead a little bit, but uh, um, this is a fact. And uh, as a challenge, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to leave it to you to try to prove it. You, you have enough tools to do it, okay? But uh, um, it's a little, it, it's, it, it's a little hard, okay? But, uh, I would love to see some of you uh, prove it. Okay, but let's 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 ourselves provide a proof of this theorem. Uh, let me mention a, a, a corollary, actually, of this theorem. It's a very quick corollary before I prove this theorem, just to show you how useful this fact is. So, an immediate corollary of this theorem is that every bounded sequence. So, this gets to uh, David's question. Every bounded sequence in RK uh, contains a convergent subsequence. Do you see why? RK is not compact. 
How can I say this is an immediate corollary? You have a bounded sequence. Therefore, the bounded sequence lives in a compact subset of RK. And therefore, it lives in a compact uh, metric space. So it contains a convergent subsequence converging to a point of that set, which is in RK. Happy with that? Okay. This corollary has a special name, which you sometimes hear referred to. It's called the Bolzano wire stress theorem. Wire. Theorem. Okay. Every bounded sequence in RK contains a convergent subsequence. So let's uh, let's try to prove let's try to prove this fact. Why is it the case that compactness is enough to give us sequential compactness? Compactness seems to give us lots of nice things, but What's true here? Well, here's one way to think about what's going on. You have some sequence in a metric space that's sort of hopping around some metric space. And this is some compact space x. OK, well, there are a couple cases you could consider. You could consider the case where, for instance, if you look at the range, of this sequence, that is, all the values that are actually hit. If it's finite, then can you show that every that this sequence has a convergent subsequence? Yeah, Jacob's saying yes, because if you only hit finitely many things and there are infinitely many points of the sequence, one of those points must be hit infinitely many times. Okay, so if R finite, then some value some p in uh, pn is achieved infinitely many times. So you just use that subsequence. Okay. This is a version of the pigeonhole principle, right? If you drop infinitely many pigeons and finally many holes, some hole must have infinitely many pigeons, right? Okay. So um, use this. Use this <coughs> subsequence. <coughs> Excuse me. OK. What if R is infinite? If the range is infinite, <coughs> then, hmm, got an infinite subset of a compact set. Lindsay. Okay, and try to use that to kind of figure out where the. Okay. Okay, yeah, you could go back to the definition of compactness and, and proceed in a direction that you were going in, but we've actually done that already. We've done that already. Remember, if you have an infinite subset of a compact set, then that, subs that set must have a limit point, okay? And that's, oh, interesting. So that means these, there must be some point that is accumulated on limit point. There's probably many, but there's at least one limit point. Okay. So if R is infinite, then the R, then by a previous theorem, in your book I think it's theorem 2.37, uh, but we showed it in class too. If R is infinite, uh, since X is compact, R has a limit point. Let's call it P. Now, the claim is that P must be a subsequential limit. Of what subsequence? Of what subsequence? 